Two years ago, Libyans celebrated their revolution and the overthrow of Colonel Gaddafi. But now the militia, who played a central role in the uprising, are endangering any hopes of stability. More than 100 people have been murdered in Benghazi, where the revolution began, and the embattled government in the capital has failed to confront a growing threat from jihadis. Our international editor, Lindsay Hilsom, who covered the revolution from the beginning, has returned to Tripoli. She travelled to Benghazi and on to Seba to ask whether the hopes of two years ago have now been dashed. On a quiet Mediterranean night, you might think all is well in Tripoli, until suddenly it's not. We filmed from our hotel balcony as two rival militia clashed. It turned into the worst fighting since the overthrow of Colonel Gaddafi. Libya's weak government has no control. The men with guns are a law unto themselves. The brigades who spearheaded the Libyan revolution now threaten to destroy it. When not battling rivals, the powerful Nawasi brigade search for drugs and weapons, self-appointed guardians of whichever laws they choose to enforce. Drunk drivers are arrested, that's fine, but the Nawasi favor strict Islamic law and their victims accuse them of ill treatment. Look, most of our enemies are drug dealers, young men driving with blackouts on their car windows, which we remove, and guys with girls in the vehicles behaving in an inappropriate way, which is against our culture. There's a problem, I think. Another suspect vehicle. Libya's weak elected government tries to control the militiamen by paying them. It doesn't work. Those armed groups uh, are not all evil, by the way. Uh, many of them are uh, genuine. Uh, they want uh, Libya to advance, but some of them don't. So if we can isolate those who don't see Libya as a country of law and order and justice, we can win the other part. We went to Benghazi, where the revolution started. Here, there's no law and order. It's better not to get out of the car for very long. You never know who's watching. The Rotana Cafe was popular with women and families. Some say that's why it was bombed. A message from the Islamists. I don't know who's next. This is not for me, you know. I don't have any problem with any people. You know, this is not for me. This is for Benghazi, for Libya. This bomb for Libya. Explosions like this, assassinations, that's what's come to mark Benghazi. It was the cradle of the revolution. And it's this which symbolizes what's gone wrong. Nobody here feels safe anymore. Fear is everywhere in Benghazi. Everyone's seen the hit list. No one dares say who they believe wrote it. Mustafa shows me pictures of his father, Colonel Ahmed Mustafa Bargati, one of a hundred people assassinated in the last year. Six more family members are on the list. Most of the targets are army officers who joined the revolution after serving under Gaddafi. But who are the killers? These people who do these killing, they are organized and they know what they do. So they're not just randomly killed or just accidentally killed. They study and they, they wait for the perfect moment. We drove past the occasional black Al-Qaeda-style flag, but the only people I met who dared say jihadis are the prime suspects in the wave of murders were two young TV presenters. Yeah. We can't deny it. Qaeda is here. Qaeda is in Egypt. Qaeda is in Tunisia. It's everywhere. We did not have Qaeda before, but now it's, you know. Is that a particular threat to people like you? Uh, it could be. The jihadis are trying to spread their influence across Libya's vast territory. They move unimpeded across the desert in the south, free to stockpile weapons and liaise with jihadi groups in Syria, Mali and beyond. In the town of Seba, they've left their calling card by destroying the largest Sufi shrine in the region. They uh, told us that you are worshipping these graves, which is not true. The young man's ancestors are buried here. He was afraid to reveal his face. The local authorities and the government in Tripoli are too weak to take on the extremists.
we're gonna fight them. If they come again, we're gonna fight them. You know. But then there will be war in Libya. What to do? They have to. They have started the war, not us. The Libyan revolution has brought turmoil in its wake, disturbing even the dead, and leaving the living to learn that where there is no law, there is no freedom.